Aladdin and his magical lamp. Chapter 1 A Magic Uncle. There was once a lazy boy named Aladdin. His dad, who had to run a family business alone, died of worry. Aladdin's mother was in despair. One day, Aladdin was messing around as usual when a man came up to him. Aladdin! He cried, it's me, Uncle Abadzar, your father's long lost brother. I didn't know I had an uncle. I've been away for many years. That evening, Aladdin's mm. new uncle Vit invited himself to supper. When he heard that Aladdin didn't have a job, he thought him, he bought him a fancy store to run. Aladdin and his mother were very happy. Neither of them guessed that Abanazar was really a wicked magician. The next day, Abanazar took Aladdin on a long walk out of the city. Here we are, said his uncle at last. He lit a fire, threw some powder on it, and said some strange words. A trapdoor made of stone appeared in the grass. Aladdin was astonished. His uncle could do magic. Under this stone, there are many treasures, but I only want one, said Balazar. Bring me the lamp. But uncle, no buts. Take this ring, it will protect you, he added, pushing Aladdin down the stairs. Aladdin went through four rooms of gold into a garden of fruit trees. The fruit sparkled like pieces of glass. He saw the lamp, stuffed it into his pocket, then picked handfuls of pretty fruit. Hand me the lamp, cried Abanazar from the entrance, but Aladdin had taken too long finding it. Abanazar thought he'd been tricked. How dare you keep the lamp for yourself? Before Aladdin could answer, there was a loud thud and everything went dark. Chapter 2 Two Genies Aladdin was trapped. It was cold, dark, and very spooky. He rubbed his hands to keep warm. Suddenly, a huge man rose up in front of him. I am the genie of the ring, he boomed. What can I do for you? Well, get me out of here, shouted Aladdin in a flash. He found himself outside on the grass. He rushed home to tell his mother what had happened. Abomazar can't be my uncle. He did magic things and tried to kill me, he cried. You and your story, said his father. Now, what do you want for supper? I'll sell that old lamb to buy some food. She started to polish the lamb and jumped back in fright as the giant man floated out. I'm the genie of the lamb. Your wish is my command. Do you have any food? asked Alan. I'm starving. In an instant, a huge beast appeared on silver plate. The food and wine lasted for a week. When it had gone, Aladdin stole the silver plates. I'll give you a good prize. My precious bike better. Now life was easy. If Aladdin or his mother wanted food, Aladdin just rubbed the lamp and asked the genie. One day, Aladdin was at the market selling place when he saw some sparkling jewels. They're just like the glass fruit I picked in the cave, he thought in amazement. It wasn't glass after all. He ran straight home from the jewels and he picked in the cave found the jewels he picked in the cave and hid them. Chapter three The Sultan's Daughter Early one morning there was a command from the Sultan. Princess Bordoro Butter will go to the pub Public bath today. Everyone must stay at home. Aladdin wondered what the bus was about. He hid at the bath so he could see the princess for himself. When she lifted her veil, Aladdin almost fainted. The only female face she he'd been kissing before was his mother's. But Princess Budro was beautiful. He kept he skipped home. With starey eyes and a silly smile. Whatever is the matter? asked his mother. I'm in love with the Zoltan's daughter, he sighed. I must marry her. His mother laughed, but Aladdin was serious. If I don't marry the drawer, I'll die, he said. He begged his mother to ask the Zoltan for his daughter. Take him these jewels as a gift, he added. The Zoltan would never agree, cried his mother. 
but she was very worried about her son, so she did as he asked. The Sultan lived in a grand palace. On her first visit, the Sultan didn't even look at Alice's mother, but she went back again and again until finally he spoke to her. Why do you keep coming to my palace? She told the sultan about her son's love for Princess Bordeaux. We are not worthy of your greatness, she mumbled. But here's a small gift. I've never seen jewels so big. Hmm, Bordeaux doesn't need a husband, the sultan said. But you say my son could marry her, cried the thin man beside him. The man was a powerful lord called a vizier. He whispered something in the sultan's ear, then the sultan turned to Aladdin's mother. Your son can marry my daughter in three months' time, he said. I'm going to marry the princess. I don't just trust that vizier. Chapter 4 The Brown Husband Two months later, Alice's mother was in the city. Everyone was talking about a royal wedding. Princess, you marry vizier's son today, shouted a head wrote. Alice's mother rushed home to tell Aladdin the bad news. He was very upset until he remembered the genie of the lamp. He ordered the genie to deserve disturbed the couple that very night. Put the vizier son out in the cold and bring Princess Bajor to me. At min midnight, the genie brought Bajor to Aladdin's house and left the vizier son in the dark, damp street. Help! I won't hurt you. You are safe with me, said Aladdin softly. Before sunrise, the genie returned Bajor and the Vizier son to their room. What's wrong? asked Bajor's parents at breakfast. You look awful. Princess Bajor kept a very quiet. At evening, the vizier son prayed for a peaceful night's sleep, but at midnight, the genie came again. After another cold night on the street, the vizier son had had enough. I'm sorry, Sultan, he said. Your daughter is wonderful, but I can't, hope, can't cope with these horrible midnight nightmares. Oh, well. It, had, it wasn't meant to be, cried the sultan, and he ended the marriage. Chapter 5 Aladdin gets married. Before long, Aladdin's mother went back to see the sultan. Tell your son to send me more jewels, he told her. I want 40 plates full, he went on, carried by 80 servants dressed in silk. Only they can Aladdin marry the drawer. The genie managed this easily. Within an hour, a long procession was on its way. The sultan couldn't believe his eyes. Tell your son that he can marry my daughter right away, he told Aladdin's mother. But first, Aladdin wanted a home for Bajor. He described his perfect palace to the genie, and the genie built it overnight. Marble floors, jewels in the walls. Aladdin rode to the sultan's palace dressed in his finest clothes. The wedding day began with music and dancing and finished with feasting and fireworks. That evening, Bajor went to her new home. She was delighted. Aladdin was the most handsome man she had ever seen and their palace was the best in the world. Chapter 6 Abanazar Returns Far away in the desert, Abanazar learned of Aladdin's good fortune. He must have escaped with the lamb, he snarled. He went to Aladdin City to find a lamb. New lambs were old, he shouted. New lambs were old! But your heard a shouts from her palace. That sounds good, she thought, and found an old lamb to give him. Abanazar ran to a quiet corner and rubbed the lamp. What can I do for you? asked the genie. Take me, the palace, and the princess to the middle of the desert, said Abanazar. Later that morning, the sultan looked from his window and nearly fainted. My daughter's palace has gone, he said. He thought Aladdin had tricked him and sent some soldiers to arrest him. Aladdin returned from a hunting trip to find a group of soldiers at no palace. He was just a surprise at the sultan. Don't worry, I'll find your daughter, he promised. You'd better, or else you're dead. The Aladdin clapped his, clasped his hands together in despair, and the genie of the ring appeared. Oh, I'd forgotten about you, said Aladdin. Please help me. I can bring the mother to you, he replied, but I can make you to her. Take you to her. Seconds later, Aladdin was beneath Bajor's window. A wicked man treated me, 
Don't worry, Aladdin called. I have a plan. I'll go to eat with him tonight. I'll sneak in with some poison, and you can put it in his wine. Abanazar was so busy gazing at the jar, he didn't see her poison his drink. After one sip, he fell to the ground and died. Aladdin searched the palace for his lamp. One week later, he and Bazaar were home. Chapter 7 The Evil Brother A bullet still weren't safe. Abanazar had an evil brother and he wanted revenge. The brother dressed up as a as Fatima, a holy woman. He stood outside Aladdin's palace pretending to heal people. The girl was very excited to see Fatima and invited her inside. What a lovely hole, said the plague, said the fake Fatima. But if you hand a rock stick from the home, it will be even better. The rock was an enormous bird with, which laid huge white eggs. But door of Fatima's su su suggestion, suggestion and asked Aladdin. No problem, he said and called the genie of them. Bring me a rock's egg. What? Anything but that. Well, the genie, if you ask for much such thing, I must kill you. But I know it wasn't your idea, he went on. But Tima is really a brother's brother in disguise. He wants you dead. Aladdin was shocked. He had to think fast. Oh, my head's so sore. He asked for Tima to heal his headache. As the evil brother came closer, Aladdin grabbed his sick dagger and he killed him. With no more evil men to bother them, Aladdin and Bajor were safe. In time, Aladdin became a sultan and his mother became a grandmother. They had all they could wish for, so the lamp and ring were left in a drawer. Who knows, the genies may still be there today. Aladdin and his magical limb come from a collection of Arabian stories known as the Thousand and One Nights. In early tellings of the story, the wicked magician is named, but in the first Aladdin, Pantoline is called the Bonazar. So that's the same with used here. The end.